right, we're back for the next segment. And here we are going to talk to Jamie Fox of Techion. Jamie, you are an Alkira user. So let's set this up for people. We've got a bunch of engineers listening to this. Would you describe for folks the service that Techion provides and who your customers are? Sure. Uh, we are uh, in play in the dealership management software space currently. Um, we're at our core, we're a Silicon Valley software startup, but we play in the automotive uh, retail space. Uh, our customers are car dealerships all across the country, um, and we service their full suite of business applications, parts, service, retail accounting, everything. Okay. So now all those services that you're hosting for them, the services that you're providing, where do those live? Are they in the cloud, data centers? Where are they? They're completely cloud hosted. We're built in the cloud. Um, we don't have data centers. We're a completely cloud-based company. So that means like a public cloud, AWS, Azure, those sorts of places. That's yeah. correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we want to understand the connectivity solution. You've got car dealerships scattered all over the place. Um, you've got services that are in public cloud. What did you build on the Alkira platform so that your customers can access these services? So there's two parts to it. Our, our core application is actually internet facing. We don't run any of our core application over Alkira. But we have a need for TCP services coming out of the cloud, going on to, into on-premise locations. And that requires uh, interconnectivity with our dealer networks. And so we built that, and we're starting to build that completely on the Alkira, Alkira platform. So, okay, so do I have a point of entry and exit from the public cloud into the Alkira cloud? Correct. Yes. But the, the difference is there are kind of two segments of services. Uh, the services that we provide um, are a bit separate from the application, but they need that physical connectivity into an actual customer network, whereas the software does not. Got it. The, the dealerships, then they also connect into this to, I don't know, Correct. what do call, call it a fabric, Jamie? Correct. Yes. So you, you consider the customers are on, if you're looking at the LQ report, they're on the left side, but they are the, they are the inner connectivity into the LQ cloud. And then our public uh, cloud VPCs, VNets, whatever you want to call it, connect into the, the LQ platform as well. Got it. Okay. So let's go through the process of connecting up a new customer site, new dealership. They just signed up with Techion. What happens here? Are there are multiple circuits that are required. Do you have to ship hardware to the site? Do you need do you need some human on site to do something for you? So we actually, uh, our company is flexible in nature, and so we employ a pretty flexible methodology to how we deploy a customer site. It can be everything from us doing kind of like a managed services aspect, where we're actually owning a full top to bottom physical network stack for a dealer, all the way to a customer that owns their own network gear. So. Sometimes we're putting in a device on site and we're configuring it and managing it ourselves. Uh, and on the flip side, we may be not having any infrastructure on site at all. And we're just simply having them terminate onto the Alcaro platform. And then there's some kind of routing, routing peering uh, that gets Correct. done. Some, yeah. So you've got to yeah. announce the blocks that Correct. You're, where the services are into their of network course. somehow. Yeah? yeah. So there is, there is a teamwork element of it, regardless, whatever way you slice it, whether it's, us working with the dealer, our, us handling everything ourselves, but there is a multi-step process to do it. Okay. So once that connectivity is in place, then the process is, is there like a, a testing, a certification process where it's like, yeah, I'm not going to be getting the response time I need and, you know, yeah. failover's working. And yeah. So we end-to-end -end test everything soup to nuts um, for every new deployment. So we have to validate that Everything is working exactly to the standards that we set um, for every single customer. And regardless of the hardware they have at their end or uh, any of the complexities that come with their network. Okay. So then when that happens, how much of that is, is you know, old school instrumentation, if you will, and then the Alkira platform where like you're looking at some kind of a window into how the fabric is performing for you? Yeah. So we do a little bit of it ourselves, but most of it is done all the, on the Alkira platform, right? We're leveraging the tools and all of the, the logging and reporting that they have in order to get a lot of that data. So describe that because you just said single pane of glass. Okay, you didn't say single single pane of glass. You didn't say that, but that's it's kind of what popped into my head. Yeah. So is, is that yeah. the sort of a thing you're looking at? Yeah, so it's essentially from a turn up and configuration standpoint, let's take out of the picture, um, any of the like workloads or things that we're running and just focus on the network turn up process. All of that we do on the Alcura platform. 
from bringing on a new site, generating whatever configuration files they need, bringing them up, testing connectivity. We can do all of that from Alkira and then end-to-end -end test from the actual, let's call it EC2 instances, anything that we have mm -hmm. in the cloud, we can test from there. But the whole Alkira network test and turn up piece is all done from Alkira. So I could have someone on my team that doesn't even have access into AWS or Azure uh, directly do all of that work on the Alkira platform. All right. So, and the interaction then is web UI, CLI, APIs? Web UI. So all of that's web. Um, it's okay. So um, I think I, I think I can imagine this here. I've got some kind of a graphic representation of the network yes. uh, showing me interconnect points, yes. and then I can see. I haven't actually seen this, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm truly speculating and asking you, and you're just going yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can explain it a little bit. So if you're if you're if you are logging into Alkira for the first time, on the left yeah. side you have your let's call it sites. In our case, customers. Uh, on the right side you have all your cloud interchanges, and then right in the middle you have any services that you're running. So our left side is our customers. We can group them, segment them out, and we can bring up IPsec tunnel configurations from the Alkira dashboard directly. Whereas mm -hmm. historically we would do it from Azure or from AWS, we can distribute that file and we can monitor and manage that connection from Alkira directly from a web UI. Got it. Okay. So this sounds like you'd expect it to sound from a network engineering perspective. In other words, the, it, it's logical. This is how you think of the flow. But th there, there's details in the middle that you don't need to know, it sounds no. like, because Alkira just handles that for you, right? Yeah, that's correct. But especially for a company like us, where we're super fast paced, resource lean, um, and we don't employ a lot of hardcore true network engineers. We employ pretty holistically technology talented individuals on our team. Mm -hmm. This gives them the ability to run their projects end to end with minimal intervention from a, a network engineering standpoint on, from a day-to-day -day operational perspective. You don't need a CCIE to stitch all this together, in no. other words. Yeah. No. All right, well, let, let, let's close this part of the discussion with this thought, Jamie. What, what is different about the Alkira platform? There, there's a lot of entrants in this space. Nothing that does everything that Alkira does that I can think of. But So what is different about Alkira that you chose this instead of saying, like a really common approach, extend your SD-WAN fabric into the cloud and do your multi-cloud that way, or using some of the cloud-native stuff? You guys went Alkira. So uh, again, highlight that difference. Yeah, so for us, we were looking for simplicity. Uh, reliability and and just having a single place where no matter where we put our workloads, we wouldn't have to do any manual work in order to keep our customers serviced in the way that they need to be. And from an Alkira perspective, that makes it super easy for us, right? We can add GCP, we can add Azure, we can add AWS, and then our customers aren't impacted because all they're doing is interchanging on this on uh, on the Alkira platform. Instead of going to the true multi cloud model. If we're doing it ourselves, first of all, we don't have the resources to do that. And that's not our focus, right? We're not a network engineering company. We're a software company. And so having a tool, we like to do things ourselves. That's how we do our business. But having a tool like Alkira allows us to say, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can leverage something that's already out there that is providing exactly what we need. Got it. That, you made a pretty clear case, Jamie. And thank you very much for the discussion. That is, uh, it is all much appreciated, your insights into this. So up next, we are going to have another Alkira use case conversation with a Coke Business Solutions. That's going to be led by Drew Conray Murray of the Packet Pushers. And we'll be right back in just, oh, 10, 15, 30 seconds. We'll see. <laughs> 